One of our personal favorite ancient sites is the ancient fortress of Sacsayhuaman. We believe this site was built an unimaginably long time ago, yet it would still be a daunting proposition for any invading party. One of the most impressive features of the site, and the reason why it is ranked as one of our favorites, is the inexplicably baffling stonework that makes up the fortress's maze of outer walls. Created without the use of mortar and encompassing some of the most astonishing ancient stonework we feel to be found anywhere on Earth. Although many other sites within Peru undoubtedly contain incredibly precise stonework, Sacsayhuaman is the jewel in the crown when it comes to the evidence for a lost advanced civilization. The largest stones in this boundary being 28 feet high. Regularly academically estimated to weigh over 120 tons, with more enthusiastic estimates placing the largest stones at around the 300 to 400 ton mark. Located on the outskirts of the ancient Inca capital of Cusco, it rests on an enormous artificially leveled plateau. It consists of three outer barriers, gargantuan walls, 1,500 feet long and 54 feet wide created in a strategic zigzag shape. They surround a paved area containing a mysterious circular structure. As recently mentioned in another video, there is overwhelming evidence to suggest two phases of building was undertaken at certain sites within Peru. We feel that the constructors of Sacsayhuaman are the same people who indeed built most of ancient Peru. This group were the ones who utilized the enigmatic protuberances even found upon the casing stones on the Great Pyramids. However, interestingly, there was another, later phase, and although not as complex, still far more advanced than any academically studied ancestor who are currently claimed as the actual builders. This means that more than one ancient civilization must have called ancient Peru home. A later group re-inhabiting these sites, flourishing to a point where they were clearly inspired by the site's original builders, becoming highly capable stone builders themselves. How old is Sacsayhuaman? Who could have possibly built it? And why did they not utilize the mysterious protuberances found on much of their other stonework throughout Peru? It is, undoubtedly, one of the most incredible ancient sites still standing on our planet. And thanks to the incredible capabilities of its builders, it will remain standing for many more years to come. It is a site filled with inexplicable features, which we find incredibly compelling. Sacsayhuaman, meaning Royal Eagle, is a fortress temple complex which lies at the northern edge of the once great Incan capital of Peru, still known today as Cusco. Apparently constructed during the reign of Pacacuti between 1438 and 1471 AD, according to academia, its massive, well-built walls remain a testimony not only to Incan power, but also to their skills of architecture and their approach of blending their monumental structures harmoniously with the natural landscape. The Sacsayhuaman site was so well-built, in fact, it is still used today for reenactments of Inca-inspired ceremonies. With some of the biggest blocks to be found within ancient ruins anywhere on Earth, it's important to remember just how these ancient civilizations managed to move these stones, having never actually thought to record such techniques within engravings or writings of any kind, remains a mystery. Blocks many tons in weight placed together with such precision, no mortar was ever used, yet the site remains intact like a giant's dry stone wall, enormous random-shaped stones were apparently effortlessly stacked neatly together, or one on top of another, forming the amazing walls we see today. Who built Sacsayhuaman? Was it really the Incas? If so, how did they manage it? Like all other ancient sites upon Earth, archaeological finds are one of the main driving factors behind dating such relics. These investigations will often look for specific artifact types these objects, known to have places within studied history, are often used to establish a date given. This by no way means that the date is accurate, or indeed the artifacts from a far different type of culture, from a very different time in history, are not missed, or more often than not, ignored. 
the giant blocks interlocked and sloped to maximize their resistance to earthquake damage, a construction feature somehow understood over 500 years ago. Time has proved its efficiency. Earthquakes have done remarkably little damage to the structures in Peru over the years, many still in their apparently abandoned state, and the Sacsayhuaman is no exception. Did the Incas really build Sacsayhuaman, Machu Picchu, etc.? Or, like we have postulated regarding the Great Sphinx and the Giza Plateau, was the Incan Empire a mere re-inhabitation of an extraordinarily well-built ancient ruin, left by a far more advanced, yet far more ancient civilization? Perhaps one day, Peru will reveal its ancient secret. When one begins to realize that many of the ancient sites found here upon our planet have, throughout the years of modern study, only ever been attributed to civilizations we have actually been able to study in detail, rather than their true creators, a highly advanced group of individuals, once capable of constructing awe-inspiring structures using unimaginably huge blocks, fortresses perfectly built with stones placed together as if cut to size. These stone structures have come in many shapes and styles, yet undoubtedly the most impressive among the collection is polygonal walls. Many of the most popular are located within Peru, although their fascinating existence spans much further afield. Delphi was once an ancient sanctuary, famous for being home of Pythia, an oracle who was consulted about important decisions throughout the ancient world. Interestingly, the Greeks considered Delphi the navel of the world, with a mysterious stone monument known as the Omphalos of Delphi, having once been placed there to signify this. Located on the southwestern slope of Mount Parnassus within Greece, undoubtedly the most compelling feature of the site and the one we feel indicates the true identity, and thus its actual immense age, is its polygonal wall. That, according to academia, was somehow built by the Greeks from around 510 to 323 BC. However, the site's wall, although rarely academically mentioned, is in fact lost knowledge, or more precisely, an advanced method of ancient construction that we are yet able to explain or unravel. We have long stated that many of the ancient sites around the world were seemingly built prior to some form of reset within human knowledge and development. Structures built with such skill and with such enormous blocks that these surviving remnants may be all that is left to now indicate their once existence. Thankfully, however, due to the unfathomed skill involved, these remaining fragments are, for all intent and purposes, out-of-place artifacts within our own history. Was the entire site merely reoccupied and claimed as another's creation? A claim conveniently allowing academics to avoid appearing out of their depth. Who built Delphi? When was it built? Were the ancient theaters, stadiums, and statues attributed to the Romans and the Greeks actually creations left by a people far older? With such unexplainable features at said locations, we find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling. We have covered a number of ancient ruins that due to currently funded and passionately attested academic paradigm we strongly suspect are attributed to far more modern constructors. However, many of these ancient sites, if one spends a little time researching their origins and indeed the structural anomalous features involved in their construction, are often revealed to instead support the premise of a far more capable, advanced builder having once been responsible. Also by a group who were indeed far more ancient than academia would prefer you to suspect or entertain as a possibility. What's more, further supporting our posit, there are also many other factors of compelling evidence which support this hypothesis, with ancient texts often found within that, although often academically ignored, 
actually admit to the same reality of a prior constructor, sometimes attributed as gods, yet additionally, the geological facts established by the study of the lands, which support such opinion, cannot be scientifically or historically denied. One of these sites is known as Inyavis. When we initially began to peruse this ancient site, the first and most striking feature one was confronted with were the intriguing structures found within, known as shipsheds. We have often postulated that the Greeks, and especially the Roman Empire, not only stole, or more precisely, borrowed a lot of ingenious inventions from a much older, far more advanced civilization, but it seems that Inyavis is another site which could, in all possibility, further support this posit. This borrowing of technology and strategic design would have aided the Romans and Greeks, just like the Incas of Peru and the Egyptians of Giza, in an illusionary perception of strength and intelligence, which we feel undoubtedly helped these once successful civilizations flourish, expanding their empires across the globe. Although we were initially struck with the curious design of these shipsheds, designed like modern lifeboat houses to protect seagoing vessels from the ravages of the sea, the second realization which came very shortly after their initial study was the absence of any localized waterfront. Is it possible that they are far more ancient ruins, a pre-Diluvian site, that over countless millennia, or possibly after the Great Deluge itself, lost its seafront positioning? This absence of a seafront could have been explained away due to numerous reasons. Yet when we further investigated the site, the telltale, anomalous, highly advanced, ancient building techniques, indicative of lost knowledge and thus lost civilization, soon began to surface all over this rarely academically shared site. We have in the past postulated, with what we believe is strong supporting evidence, that amphitheaters were another borrowed ancient ruin from a lost civilization, a structure present at Inyaves, with some elsewhere, such as the supposed Greek ruin of Delphi that we revealed after in-depth observational investigation as having polygonal masonry present within the flooring of the theater. This as yet unexplained form of masonry is, unsurprisingly, also present at Inyaves, a fact which not only supported our original suspicions of a far greater age, but we in fact predicted as being present, which we feel is now strong supportive evidence to suggest their original construction by the same lost civilization. Was Inyaves once on the sea's coast? That after the Great Deluge had subsided, was geologically stranded, left high and dry by an undoubted change in the location of Earth's waters? Why would such a site that we instantly suspected to be a remaining remnant of a far older civilization, indeed possess stone masonry indicative of such a hypothesis. Are all these factors a mere coincidence? Regardless of academic opinion or their attempted explanations of these as yet unexplained anomalies, we find Inyaves undoubtedly highly compelling.